Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit Live Special number 167, recorded September 3rd, 2013. Microsoft buys Nokia. We have gathered together here today to talk about Nokia and Microsoft. Uh, if you haven't heard already, Microsoft has announced their intention to spend $7.2 billion to purchase Nokia's Microsoft, or <laughs> Microsoft, yeah, slip of the tongue there, to purchase Nokia's devices and services division, or at least almost all of it. That means that the part of Nokia that does phones will become part of Microsoft. They expect the deal to close after regulatory approval sometime in Q1 2014. Nokia will stay Nokia. They'll still have their NSN, their networking services division that does all of the telecom equipment. They'll still have their advanced technologies division, which does their R&D and has all their patents and intellectual property and that sort of thing. And they'll still have uh, the here division, the mapping division for the Nokia maps. When they bought Navtech a few years ago, that became here. They will cross license patents with Microsoft. In fact, I think it's around 2.18 billion of that purchase price is for getting the rights to licenses. Microsoft's gonna get a 10 year patent license option and they'll be able to uh, possibly renew that in perpetuity. We'll see what happens with that. A few other patent licensing deals going on there. And Microsoft also gets the rights to use the name Lumia and Asha. Those become Microsoft's. However, the rights to use the name Nokia are only temporarily Microsoft's and only applicable to the feature phones. Nokia will get the right to put their own mobile devices out in 2015. So Mary Jo Foley and Paul Thurat have joined Ayaz Akhtar and Sarah Lane and myself uh, to chat about this. Paul, do you see this coming? You know, sort of, but it's funny because when something this big happens, it's surprising nonetheless. You know, uh, we've been talking about Microsoft buying Nokia for so many months now, it just seemed like a foregone conclusion. And then when it happened, it was like, what? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's still kind of shocking to me for some reason. Mary Jo, what about you? Did you, uh, did you stay upright when you heard the news? <laughs> I was actually in a reclining pose when the news Good. happened. I was asleep. Safe, safe position. <laughs> <laughs> and then a friend called me. It's it's kind of crazy. It reminded me exactly of what happened um, when Microsoft bought, uh, announced they were going to buy Yahoo. I was asleep that day, too. It was 4 a.m. that time. It was only 1130 this time. Uh, Why does Microsoft so, catch you napping like that? Though? I know. We were caught nice. napping. <laughs> so to be fair, I, I should say two people tried to call me, but I don't <laughs> sleep next to a phone. So I didn't find out until I woke up. Now, they sh you, people should know you guys are both East Coast. So this is like pretty late that this stuff yeah. broke. Yeah. Yeah. yeah worst as possible. As it, I woke up, though, at 2 a.m. And then I had to stay up and read everything, of course, and write something. Mm -hmm. But because uh, <laughs> you're an addict. We're all addicts, right? <laughs> Um, well, and it's but yeah, it, I was kind of surprised. I actually was surprised. I didn't think they were going to do it because in June, there those talks were supposedly off. If you if you recall the Wall Street Journal stories saying they were at the table and they called it off and that was it. Do y'all think this has been Microsoft's plan? Uh, there's a lot of conspiracy theories out there, and I don't mean to say it was some nefarious plan, but they thought maybe this would happen and set, have, letting Stephen Elop go to become CEO was a good bet because uh, one part we didn't talk about yet is that Elop now is no longer the CEO of Nokia. Right. I, I think we're hardwired to see these kind of conspiracies, you know, that Elop was this Trojan horse sent to Nokia to guide their strategy and, you know, make them adopt Windows Phone and then become the smallest you know, province in the Microsoft empire or something, but I, I don't really think it worked like that. I, I, I don't think that's how the world works. No, I don't either. And if you, if you buy the um, All Things D story that went up last night, they, Nokia, they're claiming that Nokia's board had 50 meetings about this topic before it finally happened. Actually, so Nokia it, did say that. Did they? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. It, it wasn't like, hey, you know, let's, let's decide this today and make this happen, right? <laughs> Not quite. Yeah, and actually, you know, to Tom's point uh, when he introduced the show, um, it seems to me that Nokia, as we know it, has ceased to exist. You know, this company that exists now to hold patents, uh, which I would argue is probably their biggest business, and has the here mapping uh, software and technologies. 
and also the NSN networking stuff is, I mean, a, a tiny shadow. It's it's almost like you split off. Uh, you know, Microsoft sold itself to Apple, but is retaining their mouse and keyboard business. You know, it's like the smallest part uh, of the company is left behind. It's it's a very different place now, or will be. The question I had when I saw the story last night, I was just like on my iPad. I saw this story pop up. I'm like, this is, wait, what is it? April first. And didn't yep. Ballmer just announce retirement like last week or something? I'm like, what's going on yeah. with Microsoft? Apparently, the, on Labor Day, they're like, yeah, there's not enough news. We're going to throw something out crazy <laughs> that way. But I, I just... I, I didn't believe it when I saw it, actually. I just Same can't thing. see the reasoning behind it because Microsoft makes its own hardware. They already know how to do this. What's the? Why would they even bother to pick up Nokia, especially after they can do all the stuff on their own? Well, well what, one thing they got yeah. um, that they talked about in the conference call was they got 8,500 design patents from Nokia. They actually... Um, I think bought those outright. Those aren't the ones they're licensing. I think they they actually acquired those. So, right. um, yeah, they they get they get something like twenty thousand people who are in hardware manufacturing added to their ranks. Thirty two thousand people total being added to the Microsoft ranks. So they're now like a hundred and thirty thousand person company as of this deal. Uh, but yeah, it, it is kind of interesting because a lot of people I'm talking to are saying they had. They basically had Nokia as their phone arm, right, before they did this deal. Did they really actually need to buy the handset business? Because they right. kind of had them already, right? So actually, I think the answer to that question is yes. And I believe that the reason it happened is that you can do some pretty simple math on the amount of money they make or lose on every device they sell and, and how long they can last with the amount of cash they have. And that, you know, how much would this company have to grow for that to become profitable? And I think it makes more sense for a company uh, with this you know, the, the size and amount of resources that Microsoft has to bring that business forward. But, you know, to the original question, I, I think I would just add that, you know, Nokia is clearly the best thing that's ever happened to Windows Phone and is arguably better for Windows Phone than Microsoft has been, than the Windows Phone team has been. And you know, earlier in this year, when I was evaluating all of the stuff that they do, because they don't just make phones, they make services and apps, uh, many of which are unique to their own devices and now may, probably won't be. Um, they make accessories, which is something you don't see from any of the other hardware vendors in the Windows Phone ecosystem. And that stuff is all very important when you're trying to build up that kind of ecosystem. When you walk into the Apple store and you don't buy an iPhone, you buy into their ecosystem. It's not just the phone, it's the software, it's the services, it's all of those devices that are compatible with the thing that you're buying. It's like a safety net. And Nokia was really the only company that approached anything like that on the, on the Microsoft side, on the Windows Phone side. True. You know, the other thing that Microsoft gets that a lot of stories are just glossing over because it hasn't been announced yet is there's there's a Nokia um, tablet coming, an ARM-based tablet that's codenamed Sirius um, that we yeah. think still probably is on track to be launched September 26. Um, maybe so not think available. They still do that, though? Yeah, I think they still do that. I do. Because that's now a Microsoft product, right? Because they bought right. all of their smart <laughs> well, devices. Yeah, except Microsoft doesn't actually take possession of the handset business till 2014 once all the That's regulatory right. processes close. So I think they still go forward and launch this. And I think uh, Nokia is also going to launch this phablet, the six-inch phablet codenamed Bandit. So there's two new devices that get added to Microsoft's device mobile device lineup um, that a lot of people aren't really talking about because they haven't officially been announced yet. But that also is very interesting. Like, how do those get positioned vis-a-vis -vis Microsoft Surface and, you know, how does yep. Microsoft differentiate their ARM tablet from Nokia's ARM tablet? That's going to be interesting well, to see too. It won't be hard because there are only going to be two RT tablets. Right. And, uh, <laughs> one them, you know, one of them will be Microsoft's and one of them will be Nokia's. I mean, I, I don't yeah. quite understand that part of it. But I read an interesting article uh, positing that one side benefit, and, and maybe not the main motivator here, is that Nokia may have been drifting towards doing Android tablets. And this eliminates that yeah. possibility. And, and it yeah. bolsters the Surface business as well. I don't, I don't know that there was ever any explicit you know, proof that that is what was happening. But I do think the timing of this is related to that, at least generally speaking, that Nokia realized you know, they had to do something different. And one of those different things could have been adopting no, uh, Android. One of those different things could have been partnering or being acquired by another company, either of which would have just destroyed the Windows Phone ecosystem overnight. And so I think they got to the point where Microsoft had to make this purchase, whereas maybe in June, for whatever reason, maybe someday we'll find out, I don't know. But, you know, these talks broke down, like Mary Jo said, and um, all of a sudden, <laughs> now it's happening. And, I, you know, sometimes it's just the passage of time. 
Do you, is is this why Balmer suddenly announced his resignation? I mean, is this just essentially crowning Stephen Elop as his replacement? I vote no on that. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, why not? Uh, you know, uh, there's a few reasons. I, I'm not a hater. I'm not an Elop hater at all. And I also am a not a Nokia hater either. But hater, I, you're a hater. I'm not a <laughs> hater. Even though I use an HTC 8X, I'm not a hater. And uh, <laughs> I I think Elop, um, he, he has some very good credentials. He worked at Microsoft for two years. He ran the business systems division, which was Office, um, the Exchange Product, Link, Unified Communication. So he, he definitely has the chops and knows Microsoft. But I, I think Microsoft, I still kind of feel like Microsoft's going to go outside for their next CEO and not even just take somebody from a company uh, related to Microsoft, but go totally outside and go do something totally different. And so I think Elop will be a really good head of the Microsoft Devices division, which is what his title is going to be when he moves inside Microsoft. Uh, but I, I don't see him as being CEO of the company overall. I don't think he's the guy they, they're going to go for. Yeah, I'm kind of 50-50 on that one. I, I, but I don't think that he, Elop coming to Microsoft, Microsoft buying Nokia means that that's going to happen. And I don't think that that's why Steven, Steve Ballmer stepped down. I, I think that yeah. when Microsoft indicates that it's going to change things so dramatically that they're removing their CEO and then days later... Uh, announced that Value Act is coming on board as part of the, literally coming on board in this case, uh, coming on <laughs> yeah. to their board. Um, things start to happen. I think that what we're seeing is uh, some rapid movements after a time of great calcification, you know, that things are starting to happen. So I think this is just another of those big steps, a really big one, obviously, but I don't think it was uh, the impetus for, for Balmer leaving. No. Um, the, the timeline, though, is super interesting, right? Microsoft announces yep. their reorg in July. Then um, Steve Ballmer announces he's going to be retiring as CEO in August. Right after that announcement, Microsoft announces, announces the Value Act, uh, an, an investor, has an opportunity to come and take a board seat. Another completely unprecedented... I can't talk too early. Yeah, one of those. We know sleep. what you mean. Unprecedented. <laughs> Unprecedented uh, move, you know. And so a lot of people are trying to connect the dots. It's like, did Value Act get the okay to get a board seat because Balmer stepped down? Um, is is it related that Microsoft's buying Nokia now uh, because Balmer stepped down and or because Value Act is coming on the board? Everybody's trying to connect all these dots. And I'm not I'm not so sure how they're connected exactly. But they all, these are things that happened in very rapid succession. And so that makes it really interesting. And, and of course, the next thing is, okay, now what's the next thing that's going to happen, right? After these four things, now what? What's the next big thing? <laughs> right. Yeah. The, well, the, yeah. Right. The, if, I have, if I understand Value Act right, they're pushing for more of an enterprise uh, strategy, different from the devices and services strategy. Is that right? That's right. So they, it seems like... They're, they yeah. would be opposed to this big, like, devices and services acquisition. Yeah, they, they have said, the only thing they've said publicly is that they think people don't, the uh, investors don't appreciate that Microsoft is really an enterprise software and services company. And they don't mention devices at all. And a lot of people yeah. have made that leap to say that means they think Microsoft shouldn't be in devices at all. And that they Actually, should sell that part. You just reminded me of something. Uh, there were two key terms that came out in the press conference that they had today or whenever it was in the middle of the night or whatever that was um, that I thought were really interesting. One, they never talked about Android. They talked about Galaxy. I thought that was really interesting. They, they were positioning Windows Phone against iPhone and Galaxy. That was w one thing. Um, the other one was that suddenly Microsoft and also Stephen Elop when he was talking about Microsoft talked about software. You know, for the last year, we've been inundated with devices and services, services and devices. You know, we're, we're, this is the company we are. And today, and I'd have to go back, I get, you know, and I'm not going to do this, but maybe someone could do this or someone knows. But if you were to go back and look at like the build keynote or the tech ed keynote, software was often something they talked about as if it were something from the past and that now we're moving to this new world. And suddenly that conversation about software started happening again. And I thought that was kind of interesting because um, Microsoft is obviously the world's most successful software company and their willingness to walk away from that term has, has been bizarre to me over the past year. And it's not like they're going to do a Google and just kind of keep, you know, their their version of Motorola at arm's length. Uh, but they did say they were going to continue to license out 
the Windows Phone operating system. Uh, they're going right. to make more money on each of the Nokia devices they sell. I think I saw it when they estimate it goes from $10 a handset to $40 a handset. Yeah. But they're going to have to still walk this weird line that they've been practicing at with the surface of, you know, we're going to make a device, but everybody else is going to make devices too. Is that going to work in the phone market? No, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. I mean, I um, yeah, you know, I, I no, I don't think so. The, the, the problem for Microsoft's for Microsoft from the perspective of these other partners is that none of them. Well, at least no, none of them. HTC, Huawei and um, uh, Samsung is that Windows Phone is nothing to them. Right. It's not it's not even their secondary de, you know, device type. It's like tertiary or something. It's something out on the outlier range. I, so. I mean, this may be the the final point for them where they just say, forget it. You know, um, it, notably, Samsung and HTC are both developing their own mobile OS and trying to get out of that kind of Android lock in. And it seems like they're they're not heading toward Windows Phone. They're heading toward other things. So I, I don't think that's a good sign. Yeah, there, there were rumors that um, HTC was going to announce a new Windows Phone this fall. And uh, I wonder now if that's actually still going to happen, if they go forward with that or if they just scrap it and say, OK, no, forget it. I'd like to see choice. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I, I, too, I really but... I like the I like the Lumia phones a lot. Um, I just feel like it's it, if you're HTC or if you're Samsung, why do you stay in this now? Because everything Microsoft does patch wise, operating system update wise, it'll always be for for Nokia phones first. Right. And, the, the only, but the only thing I will say about Nokia versus say Surface on the hardware side is that if Microsoft's PC maker heart partners all abandoned Windows, we would be stuck with that kind of Ford Model T thing where it's like you can have any color you want as long as it's black, as long as you like. I hope you like a ten point inch, you know, ten point six inch screen because that's all we offer. Um, Nokia, at least, and this is one of those things when I was evaluating the company earlier in this year, I kind of took into account has really dramatically expanded the lineup of phones they offer around the world and even more so since earlier this year. And so they have a device you can buy for $99 without a contract, which is an amazing device uh, in the United States and elsewhere. And then they have that really high end phone, you know, the 1020 with the beautiful 41 megapixel camera. And then they have uh, a wide variety of devices in between. And so I do think there's a, it, I guess the silver lining is if and when HTC Samsung, whoever else, decides to abandon this market, at least we do have this range of choices still left, each of which has, you know, kind of unique personalities and so forth. I don't know if I could see HTC dropping Windows Phone just because I'm sure when Microsoft did the deals, when HTC became like a premier partner, whatever that is, they probably had yeah. what, like how many different devices contracted out. Because a lot of us were wondering why on earth Nokia was building an ARM tablet. And the big joke was, well, that must have been part of the deal when they when yeah, Microsoft exactly. put all that money because nobody else is behind it. I, I don't know how much longer HTC would want to be in Android's pocket because they're playing second fiddle to Samsung all the time or third or fourth in that kind of list. Doesn't it make more sense for those smaller companies to kind of stay on board with Microsoft a little longer than maybe something like a Samsung? I don't think or it hurts them to stay there. OS, right? Sorry. Oh, sorry. I, was, I said, or they build their own OS and don't yeah. go pure yeah. Android, right? They They do something else. I just, you know, H, uh, Mary Jo and I both went to the HTC launch event last fall when they announced the 8X and also the 8S. And we're, I, I think I can speak for both of us. We were both kind of blown away by the designs and how beautiful they were. And, and um, it was really kind of impressive because the previous generation, the previous two generations of devices from most of those companies, Samsung and HTC, were, were pretty lackluster across the board, especially from a design perspective. But the, the problem with the HTC thing is that they never really followed it up with anything else. You know, that um, th they've released one more phone since then, only very recently. It's not dramatically different than what they had before. And they've done nothing uh, along the lines of all those accessories and special services. You know, no, no one ever talks about that one great app you can only get on the HTC or the, you know, the one great service that HTC offers um, across all of their devices, not just Windows Phone, but also the Android devices. And I think that's the thing that's lacking there, that... And that's why the ecosystem conversation that uh, Stephen Elop always has and Microsoft has around Windows 8 or Windows Phone 8 rather, I think really resonates because they are battling those e ecosystems. You know, it's Android and, and iPhone. Yeah, as I much feel like as the two, the two things oh, that ahead. HTC brought to the party, one was they did a light, a, a smaller, lighter phone before Nokia ever could finally pull that off. Um, 
That's yeah. a that's a big reason a lot of us bought those phones. Nokia phones had, you know, they had all the extra services, they had the better camera, but their phones were so bulky and it just it was a no go for me. Every time I tried one, I just said no. Um, it's not possible. And the other thing is about about Nokia. Be, I mean, sorry about HTC being the premier partner. Um, when they said they were the signature partner, what that really meant was they agreed to put the words Windows Phone in the name of their phone, and that's all that meant. We found that yeah, out yeah. way later that that's what that meant, but that's all it meant. So it wasn't like they actually were making a bigger commitment. Um, Microsoft worked with them really closely on the design of the 8X. Um, they they helped them with the naming and the branding and all that, but um, I don't think it actually meant that HTC was more committed than than they might appear to be. Well, we've got uh, time for uh, kind of a last last statement. Uh, we'll continue this conversation on Tech News today in a few minutes. Paul and, and Mary Jo have been kind enough to to stick around for that as well. But before we go, Microsoft says the reason they did this to accelerate the goal of profit. Uh, its share and market share. They want to be 15% uh, of the market by 2018. They want to prevent mm -hmm. Google and Apple from foreclosing app innovation. They want to avail themselves of outsized financial opportunity. That's that more money per hand set. Uh, that's what they say. I'd like to hear from each one of you guys before we wrap up. What, why, do, why do you think Microsoft did this? And Mary Jo, we'll start with you. Okay, I, I agree on the being boxed out by Apple and Google. I think I think that is a very strong reason why they did that. I mean, we're seeing both of those companies try to cut Microsoft my, cut Microsoft out more and more, especially Google with some of the things they're doing around uh, things like the card dev and the Cal dev syncing and all that. Um, so I think Microsoft said, hey, we better make sure that we can have this continuous ecosystem where we can do services, apps, um, and have, have the whole end-to-end -end solution just in case Google and Apple do cut us out completely. We need to be able to replicate everything that they're offering in our ecosystem as well. So I think that's a very big uh, driving message inside and outside around why they did this. And Paul, what do you think? No, I mean, I agree with all of that. I, I think that the ultimate reason that this happened was because it had to happen. I think they were forced into it. And we may or may not find out why that is. But when you look at the number of devices that Microsoft expects to be sold in, in that, I think it was a 2018 or 2015 or whatever the year was, and how they expect to have 15% of that. When you do the math on this, you see uh, a PC market that maybe has 300 million units. You see smartphones that for Microsoft maybe have 200, 225 million units. Uh, tablets are going to have X, whatever, tens, single digit millions, whatever that is. I don't know. But the, com the combination of that thing is how Microsoft fights back against iOS and Android. It's, it's you know, th they have a presence in all of those markets and it is extremely important for Microsoft to maintain an A-level game in all of those markets, in smartphones, tablets, and traditional PCs. And it's the only way they can keep continue to compete with users, with actual, you know, individuals going forward. All right, well, big thanks uh, to Paul Therott of winsupersite.com, Mary Jo Foley, all about Microsoft.com. Of course, both hosts of Windows Weekly right here on the Twit Network. Uh, we're going to jump out of here and start tech news today. So if you're watching live, stick around, and thanks for being with us.